Hey guys, I want to welcome you back to this week's online uh, worship experience. If you're first time with us checking us out, would you do me a favor? Would you please type new in the comments section? Because we'd love to uh, reach out and welcome you in a more personal way as well. I hope that today's message will speak to you in a real and relevant way. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our faithful givers. Uh, your giving goes a long way in helping needed ministry and missions happen. Now to do that, you can go online to our website, www.lbchickory.com. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a green button that says Give. Click on that and you can safely and securely give and we would greatly appreciate it. Or you can bring uh, your giving by the church office and we have a place for you to give and do that. Either way, thank you so much for supporting ministry and missions as it takes place. Um, as we begin today, let's take just a moment and just center our thoughts and our hearts on God as we worship and praise Him as Trey and Carly lead us and raise a hallelujah. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. 
Guys, I want to invite you to take out your Bibles or your devices, tap the app, and make your way to a very familiar psalm, Psalm 100. It's one of my favorite psalms. As you're turning there, as you're getting yourself ready, uh, I'm reminded of a story that took place in a very formal liturgical church. One day a visitor came to uh, visit the church, and during the service the pastor said something that really, really sparked some excitement in, in this visitor. And the visitor kind of yelled out, Amen, Hallelujah, to which he received a tap on the shoulder. And the person sitting behind him said, uh, excuse me, we don't do that here. And then the person sitting next to them said, oh, yes, we do. It's on page 15 of your hymnal. The whole point is that many times, you know, we're afraid to, to shout a hallelujah, sing a hallelujah, in these unprecedented times with COVID-19 and all the, the, the distancing, the political mess and the mudslinging, with all the news channels making the most of, of, every, of every morsel of, of issue or problem, we can find ourselves not very joyful, not mindful to give praise to God. However, the Bible speaks much about the importance and significance of praising God. Let's look at Psalm 100 as we read together. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation. Here the psalmist is leading us uh, to the point that God is worthy of our praise. God is worthy of our thanksgiving. The truth is, there are so many distractors, as I just mentioned previously, and you know what they are in your own life, that at times cause us to forget to give God our praise. And then when we do praise Him, I, just to be honest, sometimes we're lacking that gladness. Matter of fact, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, he informs us that God loves a cheerful giver. Today I want to share with you Three ways that we can give God praise. We can give God with gladness. We can give God that which He is due. Well, the first thing, and I'm going to use a couple words here that are not normally used. Maybe some use it in, in this, this neck of the woods, but hang on. The, the first word that, we, that comes to mind is that we need to give God, catch this, a holler. A holler. You know, that term holler or hollering may not be the first word that comes to your mind when we think about praise and worship, when we think about, about exalting God. However, we're called to shout or to holler our praise. Matter of fact, in Psalm 100, verses 1 and 2, we're told, shout with joy to the Lord. All the earth, everyone is to shout to God with a loud voice. We're to raise our hallelujah. Worship the Lord, catch this, with gladness. Hollering is what we do to show excitement, support, emotion. In today's drive-in church setting, it's hard for us to shout a hallelujah, but we definitely can give a honk of praise, and uh, we're loving to do that. Did you know that it's biblically okay to be vocal in your praise? However, it is important that we do it with respect. When it comes to our personal and corporate worship, it's okay to, to voice it and to agree and to encourage. Matter of fact, Psalm 95.1 tells us, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. 
In, in Psalm 122, verse 1, it says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That shows excitement and joy. Now, if you're familiar with sports, you're probably familiar with the term home court advantage or field advantage. That refers to a home team's uh, intimate knowledge of the court or of the field. Now, as well, this home team has a, a majority of fans that help support them and motivate them and encourage them. And that can play on a visiting team. For example, have you ever been to a, a football game and, and your home team is losing? I mean, being crushed by the end of the half? You're looking for the exit. You're ready to get out of there because the joy, the excitement, the passion, uh, the commitment, it's gone because the team is failing. Now, you may be asking, well, how did this happen? Well, here's the answer. If the visiting team can take the fans out of the game, they have broken the back or broken the spirit of the home team. And when that happens, game over. Why? Because the cheers from the fans bring momentum. Now, in the same way, Satan wants to do the same thing to us. He wants to do nothing more than to break the back, break the spirit of God worshipers. He does this by robbing our joy, robbing our passion, robbing our excitement and our commitment. When that happens, there goes the momentum. And for many, worship, game over. But on the other hand, the cheer of fans can bring new life to a, a tired and bruised team. It enables them to stay in the game and, and it helps them to stay, commitment, stay committed, uh, to keep the momentum, to keep the energy, the passion, the excitement, the, that, that spiritual victory, if you will, um, a, a, as we open the worship and as we participate in what takes place. Hebrews 12.1 tells us, Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. In other words, there's, there's a spiritual group that is cheering us on, believers. There's, there's this group that is saying, go at it, go for it, you can do this. And they're keeping us excited, they're keeping us passionate, they're keeping us motivated. So be of good cheer. You know, soon we're going to be back worshiping together. I really believe this. And the bottom line is our worship can be an encouragement to others. So let's give God his faithful due. Let's give God his faithful holler of praise. Now the second way is that we are to give God our homage. Give God your homage. Psalm 103 says, Come before Him, sing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Now the word homage is another word that you don't regularly use. It means respect or reverence, esteem, admiration. To give authentic homage to God calls for a personal obedience to Him. It, it, it calls for the very fact that, that God deserves our respect and our obedience, which poses two important questions. Why does God deserve it? Well, here are two reasons. He is God and we're not. He's God. He created us. He formed us. He is, he is the omnipotent, sovereign Lord. We are not. We are finite. He is infinite. He made us. He formed us. And He breathed life into us. That is that second point. Now, the second question is this. Why do we owe it? Well, because of the great worth. It, it, it is a value to worship Him and to praise Him and not to be stoic in, in our worship, but rather it, it, is, it is of great worth to communicate our, our respect and our appreciation for how awesome God is. And in number two, we are his great, greatest of creation. Out of all the things that God created, it's interesting that, that Genesis tells us that God enjoyed spending time with Adam and Eve, the first man and woman. He's enjoyed spending time with them, communicating with them, fellowshipping with them. 
Why? Because they were the greatest of all creation. We don't read that with any other created thing, only with Adam and Eve. So uh, to worship, to praise is, is of great worth. Number two, we are his greatest creation. And then number three, we are his people. As, as, as this passage says, we are his we are the sheep of his pasture. We are of value. We are of significance. We are of importance to him. So the reason we should give God our homage, our respect, our obedience, I think is best illustrated in the story of the sheep and the shepherd, which is found in John 10. And here Jesus illustrated that God the shepherd cares for you and me, the sheep. And, and by the way, this sheep is a lost sheep. This passage pictures three significant things that God does to demonstrate his care. Number one, when we stray, God the shepherd doesn't give up on us. He doesn't dismiss us. He, he doesn't say, well, I've got 99 more. Who cares about the one? But, but rather, after a long day, he is willing, God is willing, the shepherd is willing to drop everything, leave the warmth and the comfort of the, of the campfire and go search for that lost sheep. Number two, he puts up an obstacle to encourage us to stay rather than stray. He wants us to have that fellowship. He wants us to be in community. He, he wants us to have this, this fellowship with him. And then number three, when we have a hard time learning that God knows what's best, he uses times, tough love, to help us to understand the error of our ways. Did you know historically, and this is kind of rough, this is kind of hard to wrap our minds around, but historically shepherds would discipline a wayward sheep in a very unique and barbaric way, but it seemed to work. A shepherd would find this lost sheep, one that had wandered off a number of times, and to teach this sheep a lesson, he would literally break one of the legs of the sheep. Now, upon breaking the leg, he would then mend the leg and he would put it in a cast, a splint. And, and because of now the sheep being helpless, this shepherd would then carry the sheep until that leg was healed. Now, what happens is, is in this tough discipline, the sheep learns that, man, I've got to listen to the shepherd. But he also learns, man, that shepherd loves me because he carries me and he feeds me and he takes care of me, he protects me. And there's this bond that is built and that sheep will no longer wander away, but will stay close to the shepherd. And so Psalm 89, 7 tells us, God is greatly to be feared and in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. Truth of the matter is, God is worthy. So let's give God what he is due. And that is our homage, our, our, our respect, our praise, our appreciation, our faithfulness. And then the third and final thing, gift that we can give to him, another way that we can, we can give generously is to give God your heart, to give God our heart. In the final two verses, verses 4 and 5, we read, For the Lord is good, His unfailing love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation. You know, there's, there's this phrase, enter into His gates. It means entering into God's magnificent presence. But you may ask, well, how do I do that? How do I enter into His presence? Well, that's a great question, and let me answer that question for you, because there are two simple ways. As a Christ follower, we enter into His gates through worship, through prayer, through ministry. As it says in verse 4, Enter His gates with thanksgiving, into His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. So many times we desire or we pray for God to bless our mess. But did you know that, that we are able to be a blessing to God? We bless God when we worship Him. We bless God when we serve Him, when we pray to Him, when we worship Him, when we are obedient with our heart and our attitude. 
And as a Christ follower, that's what we ought to do. That's what we ought to be about is entering his gates into his presence with thanksgiving. Why? Because he is God and we are not. Then the second way that we can enter his praise, and this is actually for those who are not born again, those who are not Christ followers. We can enter his gates through a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Psalm 100 verse 5, the final verse says, For the Lord is good, He is unfailing, love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation. What a beautiful picture that, that this invitation of having a relationship with Him is open to anyone and everyone who will open their heart and their life to Christ. Um, Hebrews 10, 12 tells us, But our high priest offered himself to God as a Single sacrifice for sins. Good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And you know who that is? That is Jesus. Jesus gave his heart, gave his life, gave everything for you and for me. He gave so that we may be delivered from our sins, that we may have a personal relationship with God, that we may be a Christ follower. Giving your heart uh, to God will mean so much. It, it, it means so much more than what we can really fathom. Here are a couple of things that come to my mind as, as a blessing from giving our heart to God. Number one, there's endless mercy. And that is really God giving you and me what we don't deserve. There's endless grace. That is God giving us what we uh, haven't earned. Number three, there's endless love. That is God giving you and me what we have never experienced from anything other than God. Nothing on this earth will ever compare to the love that God has for us. And then fourth and final, endless life. And, and this is God giving us what we will never obtain on this earth and in this life. This is something that we only receive from Him for eternal life. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 tell us, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God. In Him I will trust. Because of all that God has done, all that God is, will you give God your heart? Well, I want to close with this. One of my favorite theologians is, is Warren Wiersbe, and he wrote in, in, a, in his book, A Time to Be Renewed, that some people are appreciative by nature, but some are not. And it is these latter people who especially need God's power to express thanksgiving. We should remember that every good gift comes from God and that He is the source, support, and end of all things. The very breath in our mouth is the free gift of God. Thankfulness is the opposite of selfishness. The selfish person says, I deserve what comes to me. Other people ought to make me happy. But the mature Christian realizes that life is a gift from God and that the blessings of life come only from His bountiful hand. Folks, God unselfishly gave His Son, Jesus Christ, to pay your sin debt and my sin debt. And for that, we have nothing else but to say thank you and to be appreciative and to give praise to the one whom it is due. God's gracious gift costs us nothing. But if you reject it, it will cost you everything. Because of that, we have a reason to give God a holler, to give God our homage, and most of all, to give God our heart. And I would say we need to give that heart every day and in every way. Thank you for listening this morning. Thank you for tuning into this message. And I hope this will challenge you to be more thankful and appreciative and praise God in light of what we're facing in this time, this unprecedented time. God bless you as you go through your week.